still pretty solid. Guarantee it's heavy as hell though. A lot of wood in here. And there's wood underneath the wood. Big old curled edge right here. So I just pulled the carpet out. It's, uh, I don't know, 30 pounds at least. Heavy. And, uh, granted it's the middle of winter. And this is all kinds of soggy. A few soft spots. So, yep, next trick, rip all this out. Okay, all the carpet and plywood has been removed, and uh, we can take a good look, see how this thing's fared in the last three years. So, you can see this right here is where the front sheet of aluminum and the rear sheet of aluminum meet, and this is a really thick, I think it's uh, 3 16 by 4 inch flat bar that... Uh, I used some colossal smash rivets, you know, aircraft rivets through here. And, uh, and of course the Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. And this Gorilla Glue construction adhesive hasn't lifted. I can't even get my fingernail underneath it. Looks phenomenal. Yeah, so it's in really good shape. This bracing here, these pieces, I didn't need to put those in when I did this, and I kind of wish that I wouldn't have. I ended up cutting the end of this one off to meet the, to fit the fuel tank, and you can see the battery sitting on top of that one. Um, yeah, it was kind of redundant. I had extra material and figured I'd just weld them on there to give it a little bit more, a little, a little bit more bracing. But yeah, it wasn't all that necessary. And uh, you can see how filthy this thing is. Um, every little nook and cranny that was next to the plywood. I mean, look at that. We've got mounds of just junk. You know, dead leaves, of course, toothpicks, cigarette butts, and now that I did that, a colossal amount of one-inch seat rock screws. Yeah, crap everywhere. So this is going to take a pretty serious vacuuming. Lures. So... Everything that you've ever dropped behind the plywood at the edge is now exposed. A random little piece of metal that we found on the river. I remember when we found that. And, uh, yeah, big nasty lure. Yeah, little, like, hook bags. So, and hooks, of course. Gobs and gobs and gobs of hooks everywhere. Yeah, some rivets. Look at this. I mean, this was under the wood. Kind of crazy. So, everything looks really good as far as structure goes. Yeah, it's in good shape. There's that little dodger. Man, I looked everywhere for that. So, I got this colossal pile of wood and carpet here. Uh-huh. Why am I doing this, you might ask. Why did I take all this out besides the fact that it was gross? Uh -huh. That's because that is not a permanent solution. Putting plywood in your boat for a floor is in carpet. That's a, that's a very Arizona thing to do. Here in the Pacific Northwest, that is a very bad idea. And three years ago, uh, made this boat wider. That is the second roll of carpet. And that is the only set of plywood that's been in it. And of course, because of the width, I, I had to do, I think, a total of three sheets of half-inch plywood. Maybe less. Maybe two. Two and a half. I remember I bought three, though, in order to do it. And I didn't have much left. So, I'm going to weigh all that. And we're going to find out how much weight I just cut from this boat. Obviously, I can't fish it like that. 
like this. This is uh, a little bit of a tripping hazard. That's dangerous. But I want to put a permanent solution in here that'll flatten the floor out, make it dense enough to walk on and stomp around and slam fish into and whatnot. But I also want it to be waterproof. That way I never have to do it again. And I want to be able to keep all this crud out of here. I want water to be on top of it so I can actually visually see how much water is in the boat at any given moment and bilge it out, of course. And I want to keep this clean and number one, the lightest possible. So I've been doing a lot of thinking lately on how in the world am I going to make a lightweight, waterproof subfloor in my boat? And I have the solution. I've actually done this once before when the floor what when I before I widened the boat and uh, if you watch the very first video of how I made my boat wider you'd see me taking some of that pink insulation board out that stuff is closed cell foam and it is cheap I think it's like uh, 20 bucks for a 4 by 8 sheet of 2 inch and which just so happens to be how thick I need here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all this out I'm going to put that pink insulation board between every runner and I'm hoping that I might be able to cut it in such a fashion where it fits these contours and maintains a flat structure and then once I get all my pieces cut out and this is clean I'm gonna glue it down and you see these voids these voids here that is where water was intended to pass through by the manufacturer to get to the back of the boat. I plan to maintain that, but not entirely. So I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna go on purpose to make that sealed up. But if it happens, it happens. But if I could avoid it being sealed up, I'm not gonna worry about it. That way, water can still pass around the foam. All right, I just weighed. Oh, hold still. Oh, drop. Oh. Just weighed the carpet and all the wood, including this piece, which is, I'd be willing to say, a whole sheet of plywood, maybe a smidge less. You wouldn't believe what this thing weighs. My scale is accurate, okay? This thing has been in the floor of the boat for three years. Guess what this thing weighs? Guess. Nope. You're wrong. A hundred fucking pounds, 95 fucking pounds, depending on how I balance it. Ooh. 95 fucking pounds. It's not even a whole sheet. Let's, let's scale it out here. I don't have a tape measure handy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A foot less, a foot less than a sheet. It's a hundred fucking pounds, damn near. So all together, carpet and all this wood in the bottom of, my, of the Franken sled was 274 pounds. Can you believe that? 274 pounds I just shed. Unreal. <clears throat> that's that's. That's disturbing. <clears throat> Here we go, making Billy on, getting icy on, flexing. Mm, I've been serving, make it trendy. We look sexy. Here we. Go. Making Billy on, getting icy zone, flexing, mmm, I've been serving, make it trendy, we look sexy on. Uh. It's so icy, 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 on my neck, combination, set on the catchy, money swag, I'm the detective, those are the top G, breaking good, life is good, how long I'm, you just saw in a gamer, for better life, for better love, and then I go to bed, but uh, I don't give a fuck, cause you give a fuck, you're just mad at the picture, no, the other girl, no one give a fuck, take care of a house, sit on that, my dad, now you're my son, who ain't had you, and I, yeah. Oh my god, what a mess.
wrapped up. So, foam is in. Next trick, what do you got there? You got some spray foam. What okay. kind? Tight foam, Loctite. It's uh, four times more dense than regular spray foam. Now, why did we pick this spray foam? Uh, because we couldn't find any uh, closed cell spray foam. But this is the tightest cell. Yes, this is the tightest cell that we could find in a can, and we're going to try to do it nice and quick. Okay. So what we're going to do to avoid massive expansion is go between all the pieces of foam and putty her over as it's expanding in order to try to keep it down and get as much area as possible because we're, we're just going between the pieces to uh, bind them together. We did glue it down using the the uh, cheap version of the uh, M3 5200, or 3M, I should say. So, next trick, foam in it, or spray foam between the foam. Then after that, we're moving on to the white paneling. Spray foam complete. Now we're on to the board. PVC wall panel. progress so far we got our adhesive on both sides of the RV rubber roof the PVC sheet and we're gonna roll this over and it's gonna stick forever and uh, and then we got to roll the other side over and here's the final product floor is done Yep, just a little recap. Two inch Panther board uh, insulation. This stuff is closed cell foam. And then we did uh, spray foam between it and then PVC bathroom wall uh, sheathing to for some rigidity. And then this is rubber roof material and uh, some contact adhesive and stuck it all together went through and 
cocked around all of our flaps going upright. We might trim those off, might leave them. I don't know yet. So yeah, that's our uh, that's our new floor. And uh, this, I didn't weigh all the pieces, but I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that this is a 200 pound minimum savings on the wood that was in it. So, and this is gonna last forever, in theory. So, this is gonna be much, much better. And uh, if you guys have stuck with us long enough for this part of the video, then don't forget to hit that red button and I'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks for watching.